Welcome to another electrifying episode of Test Chamber. I'm Ben Reeves. I'm joined by the ever faithful Dan Tack. Faithful. That's right. All right. Hi, hello, Mr. Reeves. Funky. I'm glad to be here. And uh, Ian Boudreau. Hello. Our uh, resident intern at large. One of these here. You said you have some experience with Civ, so we invited you up here to check out Civilization VI, which just came out last week. Excited. Yeah, you guys excited for this game? Uh, I've been playing it to some multiplayer with my my friends. It's been uh, it's been an enchanted time. Sure. So yeah, we're just going to show off a little bit of Civ and kind of take you through some of what's oh, new, man. what's old, and the music's what's really good, blue and what's borrowed. And I love listening to. Uh, the Game of Thrones guy telling me about everything as I research it. It's so good. Are you a big scout guy? Uh, I used to be of the mind that the first thing you should always build is a scout. But not anymore. Especially huh? in this game to collect the villages and the natural wonders. But I think it's actually terrible. It's just, I think they're just bad. Oh. Um, so I think the warrior warrior's a better choice. Or even just straight up monument off the bat or builder. Like, oh. Well, let's go with another warrior. Let's get two warriors out there. So... Tech tree, obviously oh, probably pretty familiar. Stuff there. Or something. Yeah, look the, at all this. The thing nice. is, I, I never look at this. I just know them all, you know. <laughs> Even with Civ Six. Yeah, I just, I'm just like, I assume this stuff. I'm like, I need pottery to irrigate my field. And look at that, I do. Wow. Look at all this. And it's all so good. So you go with pottery first. Uh, it depends on what we have. We have two wheat hexes, I think. So we kind of want it, right? Yeah, that's a good point because that gives us a granary, obviously, which is uh, helpful. Uh, real quick, since we're here, just show off the new boost mm. Eureka. Oh, thing. I love them! I love them. Is okay. really really cool, actually. So you get not for the first couple, but for these later ones, you get like a a research boost, like halfway. This will borrow fill up halfway if, for say, example, we farm resources, we get a boost to irrigation and our research for irrigation will be like halfway done. There is actually a ton of strategy involved with your setups now. You know, one of the ideas behind the system was that you'd move more organically based on what you have available, but it really has not been that way for me. I still kind of plan out exactly what I want and say, well, I just have to do this to get it cheaper. Yeah. Um, so I still have the, like, I'm always like, if I'm going for a cultural victory, as I as I tend to do, uh, I'll just go straight down the merchant path. And the, the government civics is another cool, like, little twist you do now. Mm -hmm. uh, you can slot in these little cards that give you all kinds of crazy boosts uh, and just make the craziest thing available. And I mean, it's basically like, you know, you can get a little crafty with them, but it's basically like, I want to do culture, I want to do science, I want to do military. You know, there's ones designed for that. So if you have, like, your... If you already picked your approach to how you're going to play, mm -hmm. I mean, you pretty much could kind of reverse engineer the way that you... You want. have, and I know the design behind this evolution system was sort of be like, oh, I'm near the water. I'll get bonuses to my water stuff and I'll, that'll make me go into the water tree, but eh, I haven't seen it. People still are still very set in their ways and will facilitate that. Uh, although, again, it does add that whole planning wrinkle to being like, I want to have this evolution, uh, this eureka moments Hello. ready to go. Get Did some paintings in museums. Yeah, he's a, he's a... Let's do it. Okay, yeah, it's a barbarian. Why not, <clears throat> right? Well, it's a barbarian scout, but yeah. Should be an easy victory. We can do this. I generally don't get involved in, in combat this early. Really? I want to find those. barbarians? I want to find, yeah, I, I, I just don't care. Unless they're in my city. Because I don't want to, like, I want to find those little villages before my opponents do. Since they can offer pretty substantial bonuses. Fair enough. Some of the natural wonders that you can find are also really nice. Oh. Yeah, finding stuff is uh, key. Do you ever do the automatic? Auto, I, I, yeah, auto explore, set it, and forget it. Yeah? All right. Yep, Let's every try time. that. Every time. You got to click on the little. <clears throat> That's right. There we go. There we go. So there that guy goes. They tend to be pretty intelligent about their movements. We got our other guy. And you have a city-state next to you, which is great, because it's not... Okay, so that's not an NPC-controlled thing or anything. Right. That's actually... Well, I mean, it is, but it's not another player on the board. And you can form trade routes with them and uh, on envoys to get your... Uh, you can become, like, the sovereign of them and use them. It's really cool. I, You know what? I haven't opened this tech tree at all. In, so, in the 25 hours I've played, I've never opened the screen. Really? Wow. Nope. So you don't even like <laughs> to go further in, and because you can set stuff ahead of time. Like, yeah, oh, I'm just, just gonna just kind of know intuitively. Beeline it for stirrups here. Yeah, I, I see. I would never do that. <laughs> Me neither. Well, not like you need to. I'm just saying. Right. You could. I could. I could. Animal husbandry. I like, love animal that husbandry. Like a good one? Yeah, yeah. That's you, what you I can make pastures. So pastures are nice, even though I don't think you have any tiles that can use them. Uh, no, not you yet. You need to get your granary going, and your mining going, and your builders going. I never would have built that second warrior. And yet you did say a warrior would be good right now. Dan. I said a warrior was preferable to the scout. I think the scout is a little bit less 
powerful as they used to be. Right. Ian, how familiar are you with uh, Civilization? Um, fairly. I played a lot of two, a lot of five, and then I um, I kind of lost interest with uh, Beyond Earth. I kind of fell two off. Two to there. five, man, that is a that was a bit of a jump. It's a yeah, big gap that's there. A big jump. But I mean, the the uh, it seems like the basic principles have remained pretty solid. I'd say uh, there's. Mm-hmm. Sure, but there's a lot of lot of substantial changes in this, including the Eureka system and the civics codes, which we've already discussed a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But we, also, like, the whole cities are much different in this game with how they're constructed. Mm-hmm. Uh, having to commit a tile to wonders, having to commit a tile to districts. Right. Changes city building massively compared to how it has been in other games. Do you think that's a good Whoa. change? Or? I found it more annoying to deal with. Really? I hate having to create, like, three cities just to get my art museums going. And my, I like to have my cultural capital maybe another city but now i have to make a whole empire to do it because i need enough art museums and other places to host to have my archaeology wonders and all that garbage you can see we pulled off a eureka moment we did it's pretty cool well done good job everybody we also found a wonder or a natural did we some natural splendor there yeah yep, natural splendor. yes very nice <clears throat> which is pretty good uh well so in my experience with the districts uh, I don't know how much we'll get to check that out. Probably not at all. Probably not. Uh, they don't come a, into play until mid-game-ish. But we do have our city center, which counts as a district. And you can see, like, greeneries and monuments, those things popped up under here. Later on, you'll build, like, campuses for your scientific stuff, like um, libraries or universities. You have... For science. Cultural zones. Entertainment for culture. zones. Yeah. All those kinds of things. There's which, a ton of them. Which you are limited by space, because you can see I only have so many tiles within my city. They Even, also, they take up a tile, and then you can build additional improvements inside them. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, kind of like uh, like I was saying, like the city center houses the stuff. Mm-hmm. Those other districts house other things. Um, I think it's kind of cool, because each district like gets benefits. Like I think you get benefits for your science if it's built next to a... Like, mountain range. And it's a mechanic thing. You can stack them all together and get all kinds of bonuses for being right. adjacent to each other. But it's a huge pain when other people are invading your stuff and pillaging those squares. It makes it a huge pain to repair all that. Um, it's not that you can't defend. You can, but it's annoying to have another country just, like, jump in, pillage all your crap, and then you have it's to deal with that. It's just like... But authority that makes a law. Here, we're going to see this. This is interesting. Here we go. This is the civics thing. Change some policies. Now, by the end of the game, you have, like, a million of these oh cards gosh, that you, you can so slot many. in and out. And you have different governments that give you way more card slots. And you can also unlock card slots with great, uh, great people, mm-hmm. like mer- great merchants and stuff. Give you additional card slots. Uh, I thought early on this recon thing was pretty helpful. I don't know what your experience. I take was the there. I take the combat while fighting barbs. This one? I usually do. Yeah. Even though you said let's not fight barbs, they fight you. That's true. Sometimes you can't make that choice. Uh, the fighting barbs was my uh, high school mascot. So. Fighting barbs. Yeah, they're mine too. Right. Uh, I also kind of like this one. I, I don't like going for the religious stuff, but you're right. This is probably, once we only have one city, it makes more sense to get that. I didn't go after religion in mine. I I did find that, like, by the time, because I didn't go after religion, by the time my uh, my religion, I had created a religion, yes, everybody else had one. converted. All of my other cities have been converted yes. to some other religion. I was and you have to be concerned behind. about that. I have yeah. two friends who both go for religious victories. Really? Is that so what I, they do? I constantly have apostles and missionaries outside of every one of my cities. And this basically turns into religious warfare. It's a new type of war, basically. Because when you go for the religious victory, you try to convert basically X percent of the map to your religion. There's so, lots of bonuses involved with that. I like builders, too. Which I don't know if you've played around with builders much. It's like a new instead of workers, you get builders, and they're kind of like yes. a free use item. They are can, essential. Like, yeah, but they're they're key to like getting uh, specific like resources, and they allow you to build on certain tiles and improve your city in a lot of cool ways. Right. So I think this is cool. Uh, foreign trades cool as well. Like I don't think there's any necessarily one wrong way. Dan might say there's a wrong way to play Civ, but I mean it depends what kind of victory you're going for. And the builders change. Are, the building change in this is extremely substantial as opposed to previous titles. You can't just set them and forget it and have them automate improvements. Right. Now they make three improvements and they die. You can modify that with your uh, affiliations, factions, and all kinds of other things. But basic, the basic one just makes three upgrades and, and leaves. Wow. So yeah, that and by the end of a Civ Five game, you have a army of workers out just right 
constantly right. automatically not so improving. In this. Yeah, so yeah, you can't do not that at all. You can kind of see like uh, when you zoom in on your city, not a lot of activities going on here. But as we expand things, the cities have a cool like sort of vibrancy to them, like a lot of active things going on. But since we're so early on, there's yeah, your just entertainment just will get popping. Yeah. Oh, here was this guy. Look at this. This jerk. Harold Sigurdsson. Did I say that? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. He looks like a fun guy. Yeah, he's going to kill you. That's one thing I've noticed. I don't know. The AI is very, very... They're very passive in the early game, and then they go warlike on you really like crazy in a moment. Yeah, have you ever played a game where they haven't fought you? I haven't. Not yet. That seemed to be the case with Beyond Earth for me, too. I am fond of pigs. <laughs> Dogs. I love that one. Here's some Sean Bean. I love him. He does a great job in this, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I find Anytime. myself enchanted by his... Anytime you research something new, John Bean jumps in. He's yep. also in the intro video that we skipped through. He's in every major part of the game and narrates everything. And I honestly right. think it was well done. Uh, very enjoyable. Stonehenge, holy site. Uh, horseback riding or irrigation? Irriga Dude, you got to get that wheat. That's true. And that cocoa. The wheat's right there, and so that we cocoa should probably butter. go for it. Yeah. I love cooking with cocoa butter. I love cookies with cocoa in them. I do too. Yeah. Oh, look at this. All, All right, sure. Do. All right, there you Let's go. Let's be friends, man. Now, in this game, another wrinkle they've made it so every one of the enemy leaders has a. They have agendas. So they'll always play a certain way, but they also have a hidden agenda each game that changes. So it could be like, you know, they hate religion or they hate culture. So right. you have to factor that in. So you can see, yeah, we can do. I could declare surprise war, which would be a bad idea, but... Uh, it would be a very bad idea, as we have two warriors. <laughs> I could send a delegation his way. I mean, I don't have a ton of money yet, so I don't know if I want to do that quite this early. But, yeah, there's a... Make, let's make some deals. Yeah, yeah. there's always... always we don't have anything to give, so... It's always a way to play. I generally wait for them to declare war with me. Then I kill one of their cities. Then I make them give me four of their cities or something to end the war. And then I just kill their capital. They would give yeah. you four cities to yeah. make it end? Yeah, because usually they declare war. When they declare war on me, I'm like two techs above them. Yeah. It so like usually, like, I've had I'm that I'm rolling too. over there with eight, you know, anti-tank guns against their spearmen. And so, it's like, what are you doing, man? So should we build another city at this point? It's a good idea. Go for that granary. I noticed they spam very annoyingly as well. Like, just you've got to crush through like 40 units. Yeah. It's just a pain. They have, even though they're like several levels below you. Right. They'll They've have like, like five times as many units. Yeah, like so 15 like, catapults and 40 right. horsemen just coming on your capital. I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> crank out they, some dudes. They can't do anything, but they pillage all your crap, and it's really annoying. Uh, and you can't stack units. Correct. Can you? Okay. you can't. You can, you can, uh, however, you can escort like a weaker unit, like a settler right. or a builder. You can put like escort nice. with. Okay. You can stack like catapults and stuff, like yeah. siege weapons on yep. top of one you can escort infantry unit. Yes. Okay. Which is helpful. Yeah. So it's kind of like a... You know, the stack of doom in the classic civs, like, you don't have that, which is nice, but... Right. And we got away from that a there while There is, ago. like, so I know some people didn't like the move in five, where one unit per tile. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is kind of a nice compromise. Some some units can be on the same tile, nicer. but... You know, this, this, you know what? This game feels more like a board game than other civilizations, I think. Mm, I don't like that. Let's get it's, out of it's here. how I feel about no. it. <laughs> I yeah, just, it looks beautiful. Oh, it does. It looks nice. The sound is great. I love the narration. It sounds very peaceful. I do like this old map. I've got aesthetic. some. I've got some. I don't know. I've got some some issues with some of the UI stuff. Some barbs down here. I will say, so far, rounds pretty quick. Near the end of the game, rounds will take a lot longer. And that, that's that always turn. been the case. Yeah, but, uh, but it it's seems, especially annoying in this game. Seems I agree. particularly bad in this one. Maybe some updates will help that out. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, uh, has been the standard of civilization games are greatly enhanced by their expansions or DLCs has been the rule of law for like the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I, think. I know five really came alive with um, gods and kings, I think. Yeah, it sure did. Yeah. So we have um, we can choose a pantheon. Obviously, we're on yeah. our way towards take building the one that religion. extends your borders. It's down near the bottom. Dan likes the Borders one, which is actually a pretty good one. Yeah. Let's see. Border expansion rate is 15% higher. I love that one. Go Maybe I'm missing war. it. Where is mm. it? It's that one. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it a lot. There's, uh, I mean, it's, it really depends on your place. It style. really depends on like, well, if you have access to a lot of stuff, you're like, oh, I got bananas and citrus. Maybe I want to do that. It does depend on your your play style and mm-hmm. the victory it you're going for. depends on all kinds of stuff. City all growth 10% stuff. higher is yep. great, too. That's good. Fertility rights, that sounds really good. Mm-hmm. It yep. is good. God of War, I'm a big fan of that series. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. They're, they're tied to this. There's some kind of connection there. I yeah. think there's a strong Get a Kratos strong unit. Thing. Thing. Yeah. yeah, they got to do that. Let's make a couple calls. So I'm working towards religion. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I was really slow. I didn't focus on religion at all in my it's first a, playthrough. It's a big thing you can do. It's a completely and different way to war. Yeah, got almost lost the game because um, the U.S. They were very pushy with their religion. Yeah, they'll turn all your cities and then you're done. You know? That's right. A lot of Protestants going yeah, around this victory. World. Hey. Uh-oh. Um, so still just exploring. This is kind of what the early Civ games are like. Yeah, you gotta meet all the, you know, the, you know, those things like Lisbon there. They actually give you missions that you can do for additional, like that as a quest for you. You can tell by that little bubble. Uh, oh. yeah, over here. Yep. Yeah, Lisbon has a quest for you. So to he do. has like, yep, train an archer. Once you train an archer, and those pop up over here too. I've yeah. kind of skipping them. So what's the bonus you get for a quest? Is it just different it's, every time? It's different. You can yeah. check. Oh, these barbarians might wreck my day. You get an envoy from them probably, which is nice, and then you can start like becoming their their de facto leader. Like, you won't control the city, but you could take control of it if you needed to. Should I Man, jump back here, you think? Yeah, that settler's gonna have a real rough time getting out of that city with all this action. It's kinda hot out there, huh? It's, it's hot. Should've left my other dude over there. Yeah, I agree. We can maybe, uh... You can buy a unit here I in a buy a warrior. Punch him out, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Slingers. Oh, I would've got some slingers. Really? Yeah, they could've bashed in the relative safety of your city and bombarded the enemy. That's true. All right. Here's Candy, my favorite city. <laughs> it's the capital of Candyland. Oh, that's perfect. It's just like in real life. I love it because it's realistic. The, the adherence to history has just always been it one is of my favorite things. Yeah. Great. Oh, man. I want to go fish up some crabs and some some stuff right now. Just looking at this. Mmm, crabs. Yeah, you kind of like... Oh, uh, man, they are coming on you. Especially your second what playthrough. What difficulty you put this on? They are going to take your city. I'm pretty sure it was standard. <laughs> but holy crap. Yeah, they get, they get pretty aggressive um, early. Yeah, just to take touch. them, I guess we could. Remember, you took that perk, so you got plus five attack against these jerks. Yeah. Your settler is going to have a real bad time coming out of there if you don't clean this up. Well, I'll just have the settlers. Oh, I was really hoping I'd take them down. There's a lot of good oh, rich man. land to the north. North. Uh, yeah, look at all this. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can. Uh, these resources are a good thing to pay attention to, especially mm-hmm. your second playthrough. You can kind of like, you know what they do, and you can kind of be prepared. Right. Like, oh, okay. Be like, I need two iron if I want to get my sword, dudes. Yeah, in the future, and like maybe position myself over here because I'm gonna want this later in the game to make gunpowder, that right. kind of stuff. It's really useful. And I know you guys turned it off, but they tutorialize really Dope. Yeah, there's well. a robust tutorial, and yeah. I would play on an easy difficulty if you haven't got into the games. As far as accessibility goes, uh, I didn't say this is any more accessible than the last title, but the tutorial is helpful. I, I almost feel like it's less accessible. Could be. I don't know. It might I mean, be. I know, Dan, you're an expert in things, Dan it's, yeah. tactics and all that, but <laughs> for a newcomer coming into this, I, which I'm not, I'm just saying, like, if you were a newcomer, I feel like it might be slightly overwhelming. I think the civics, yeah, I don't know if it's overwhelming, but I'd say it's, yeah, it's certainly not trying to move to the, it's not moving things to be easier. Right. Let's put it that way. Okay. So we got a new uh, 30% percent yeah. production, which is pretty good. Our I like builders. builders a lot. And then we got this. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Both of those are, I think, good. Yeah, they're, they're pretty solid. Kind of depends on what now. you're doing. Uh, I, we're going to want to start building builders. Should we swap this out? Yeah, I think? man. You should have already had some builders. Let's get that in there. Yeah. Well, we've, we're being attacked. We're at war with yeah, barbarians. Gonna say, yeah, you're going to lose that city. <laughs> There's nothing to build with. <laughs> Everything's yeah, covered in barbarians. Okay. I, I I would think it would be hilarious if they did take it. They won't, because you're only on a prince difficulty, I think, which is the default. And they generally won't take your capital on that. Let's see. It's the uh, barbarian code. Free trade. Yeah, they, 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 they honor the barbarian code. I think it's good to go for uh, for some political philosophy eventually. Yeah, I, I go right for the Honestly. mercantilism or whatever, merchant tradition. Do you? So it's up to, yeah, it's past that. I mean, you have to go through the first tier. It's... It's a second tier one. It's at the top. You're almost there. It's after yeah. mercenaries. Oh, this one? Yeah, Merchant Sword. Republic. It's beautiful. It's amazing. So that'll kind of automate it, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is maybe being aware of, like, what's coming up and, like, okay, if 
to yeah. boost this, I should build a district, which I can probably do that or to grow my civilization to at least six. So kind of mm -hmm. doing these before I start researching this would be helpful. Uh, I don't even think we have a second continent in this game because we chose Pangea. So I, I think it still counts as like just sometimes it's like you cross a river and it counts. It's oh, weird. really? Yeah. It is interesting. Um, I've noticed that uh, the reason I take the merchant thing is because trade is extremely strong in this game, uh, especially when I'm playing competitive. I like to play Rome. Rome is actually insanely overpowered. I think, you know, I'm sure someone will find a way around it, but all roads lead to Rome is like a crazy perk. You just have like 15 trade routes going and like I just have enough money to buy whatever victory I want. It's wow. crazy. Yeah, you, wow. just, you just throw money at it. You're like, buy everything. Buy all the districts. Buy all the military. Like we're talking thousands upon thousands of gold. We're talking 300, 400 gold coming in every turn. Gosh. It's insane. So And, and roads do work differently in this game, don't they? You, you, roads are made automatically by your trade routes, which okay. is really handy. Yeah. Which so means, how many? How often were you trading, Dan? Constantly. Constantly. Like those routes, once you get the trade post set up, it's just like the cash flow is absurd. And it combines with all the, whatever the guy's name is, the Roman leader. He's got everything in that, in that, um, civilization just gives you more cash. Yeah. So like, it's like going to war shirt, sure, buy an army, you know, buy all the upgrades for your districts. Just buy it. You can do whatever you want. It's great. Cause that gives you the, the flexibility to sort of just buy your way into whatever victory people aren't looking at. Now you can't do that with all of them, but it's, it lets you really get strong. Ooh, irrigation. I know. I love it. You did Time it. to get some builders. All right. And get those fish. Hmm. Mm. Horseback riding's nice because we can get some horses. Well, and... we have a we have a fish tile. Horseman sailing might help. We can make, capitalize on those fish. Oh yeah, we have fishery. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. Harbor district and lighthouse is a lot of good resources. I've noticed. It's yeah, let's thing. go for that. Since we're on yeah, the coast, twelve we turns. Can do yep, it. twelve turns. It's nothing. Uh, and I saw. I think our dudes are up for a promotion here soon. So that'll help. Yeah, and yeah, it gives you some health back, some extra abilities. You know, when they, when they send the horsemen, that's when you're in trouble. Barbarian horsemen raids are no joke. We're not uh, facing any ranged dudes. So as you can see, you know, this isn't the most fast-paced game, but it's... Uh, no. It's, but if you're new to it's, Civ, it's very solid. It's deep. Yeah, and even if you're not new to Civ, like if you're a huge Civ fan, like... You're absolutely going to love this game. Yeah, speaking about that, let's talk about the review, which you did. Which I did do. Uh, what did uh, you end up giving this bad I'm boy? I'm kind of taking a break from writing it to do this test chamber, so okay. the test chamber might go up before my review. Whoa. Okay, but, then. Uh, giving it a 9.5. That's an extremely wow. high so score. It's a good very score. Nice. Uh, which is a good game, so I think it deserves it. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you're a fan of strategy games at all. Sure. So this is okay. This is the Ur series for, you know, one more turn, one more turn. One that more is turn. the. So it eats weekends. It is the standard, the gold standard in strategy right. games. And I'm glad to hear that this offering, wow, 9 5. Ooh, that's spicy. It's spicy. It is. I think uh, we kind of talked about some of the downsides. Uh, you had some, I guess. Uh, I have some UI issues that Problems you with the UI. That you which didn't really run into. Um, I didn't have too much problem with that. I will say, like, the turn problem near the end of the game just takes forever and. That can be frustrating. Uh, I think, um, yeah, th its depth, which is a good thing, can also be maybe for some people I could see being a turnoff. Sure. Uh, but but if you're not new to Civ and you know Civ pretty well, this game going to be right up your alley. I think. Right, Do you think it does enough different okay. to separate itself from you know from five? Uh, I feel like yeah yeah I mean the districts things which actually you were kind of complaining about a little bit I really liked actually. So no, I was I was just you know I was complaining that I couldn't do my my one Uber your city usual yeah. playthrough right. and that's right, fine which, uh, I have to adapt as Rome it seems like that's exactly the what what you'd want to do too right um, uh, Rome, Rome is just great now yeah. that's more of a cultural victory thing where I just like to get all my museums like and this it forces me to make multiple cities so I can have different museums to store all the tourism works that are attracting people to my cities and all the uh, right artifacts I'm digging up but it is kind of neat that they're asking you to kind of. Uh, Specialize with your cities and and expand a little bit more. I think that's a neat incentive. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a city, or sorry, a, a settler over here, which we might want to. There's no way your settler makes it to the destination. Over here? 
There's barbarians everywhere. There's a barbarian right there, but he's fine. These lands have been been taken by the barbarians. Uh, so we might want to wander over here. These green, really high green squares. Yeah, good see, for food. as you can see, it gives you recommended spots. So I think this recommended spot is pretty good. We're close to some. It's pretty good. Extra good foods, bananas, and horses. bananas and horses. Mm -hmm. I, I've my favorite cereal. I've been known to say if I've got bananas and horses, then I don't need anything else. <laughs> Those are the two staples of modern civilization. I'm always telling you to stop yeah. saying that. I know, so but really. it's out there now. Wade, Wade, you can delete that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to build a granary. I think granaries are pretty solid. I could build maybe another settler. Maybe it's a little early. You can see you've got little recommendations Right, there. recommendations, which usually are pretty good. I think sometimes... Yeah, it's way off here. There's no reason you should ever build a settler right now. I can see the granary. Yeah. Uh, granary or builder is the correct play here. Uh, sometimes... Well, actually, a builder is a good idea. Let's do that one so, so we can show that off. Uh, sometimes it'll continue to tell you like, "Hey, you should build more traders." Hey, like when your you settlers are so. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it, man. No, he's fine. He is so not fine. Those settlers are are gonna get just taken on the way there and have their lunch money taken. Yeah, it's it's a devastating blow to lose a settler early game. They so are you expensive. Never want that yeah. to happen. That's true. But I unless you roam, settlers... because then you can just buy like ten settlers. It's really cool. <laughs> just yeah. right in a row. Yeah. I was doing that. Like, I was actually just buying the traders at that point. It was so silly. Double back real quick. Yeah, I gotta go home. Go home. Oh. Okay, so we see we found a... Yeah, uh, that, that you've got to take out, because that'll keep spawning units to send at you. And they get bigger, too. They do. Yeah. They do, and they we'll get really high. You should have checked the combat, though. Major victory, that's nice. Yeah. Major victory. Nice, nice. Really good. You got that edge against barbs, because the... The thing, we, the thing we took, right? Mm -hmm. Or did we trade that out? I, don't, I forget. No, I, don't I think, think so. Yeah. Didn't change so you can swap out your cards every time you uh, you get a new civic upgrade, which is really handy. So you can be like, oh, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to build builders within this time frame. So I'll take the builder card. And you can also do it for a price if you want to do it uh, anytime. You can pay some cash and swap them out. So when you change um, systems of government yes. now, does, is that basically how it's done? You or do, yeah. Those are the like the big ones. There's like three big tiers of them. Okay. Uh, and you can also do there's like there's carry over from the other ones as well. So there's there's a lot of elements that go into the civics uh, civics thing. And basically, you really should plan all this stuff out in advance if you want to be you know min maxing. Ooh. But you know. You gotta take uh, take the game into account too. If I see three people going for a religious victory in my game, there's no way I'm doing it, no right. matter how much I love it, because they're all gonna be warring over cities like constantly, and I can take advantage yeah, of that. Yeah, just go for something else. And go science or culture. Right, man. These barbs. There must be a, a barbarian village right down here. Now the domination victory in this game means that you can never lose your capital because you have to take all the capitals. So you gotta be careful about that. If you ever lose your capital. Your domination victory is out. Period. It's just scrubbed forever. It's scrubbed forever. You can't. Okay. You can actually cannot achieve it after that. So you gotta like you know take that into account. So if you do wind up having to do that, I mean, can you switch gears? Because it sounds like sure. Yeah. You're oh, being being a military power is still like you can. Just, if your opponent is harvesting a bunch of sculptures and artifacts and great works in their cities, just take oh, them. I just got take wiped them. there. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Here. I was very disappointed. But you, you, you took the city. It was great. I did. And now barbs will not spawn at a little place. Which, which is nice to get rid of that. Yeah. You definitely want to definitely want to get rid of those outposts as soon as you can because they just keep chaining spawning annoying barbarians that will harass you and pillage you. Got to figure out where these guys are coming from. They're getting on my nerves. Yeah. I can have um, these barbs actually, or sorry, my warriors <laughs> actually escort my you can uh, do that. My team here. It's probably a smart play. There we go. So escort formation. Escort. There we go. And it'll keep your settlers nice and safe. Right. And then these guys need They're to actually promote, yeah, promote them up. Battle cry. Pretty good. Exploring. Pretty good. I'm very happy about that. You like some battle cry? Yeah, I like, I like upgrading units. So now we got some trade. We should Ooh. maybe build a trader and try trading with candy here. I don't think we can do that yet. Can, can you get this early? I don't think this unlocks traders. Oh, maybe so. Yeah, these are. You want to apply the trade? You roots. can stack some really sick stuff to just like I said. That's that's how I had you know. Gotta wait on that. Five hundred gold coming in a turn. Something ludicrous like that, man. Yeah. And then you get discounts going. Yeah, you're ready for a trader. Trader, nice. We could also uh, sometimes you can purchase things with faith. You're right. Uh, Certain units can only be purchased with faith, right. namely. Apostles, missionaries, inquisitors, and the naturalist. And sometimes you can build um, new 
units. There is Delta a University there's some weird day. thing you can take later that lets you buy other stuff with faith too. Like right. if you're going a uh, religious thing, you can be like you can buy all your stuff with faith now. Right, right. There's some crazy thing that lets you do that. Uh, well, let's see. I don't know. For the sake of time, I kind of want to just buy a trader. Just always just buy the trader. You yeah. always just buy the trader because it's going to make its, it's gonna, money back yeah. right away, man. Uh, and this guy is going to let you heal up real quick. I mean, unless you need that money for something else on hand, like you need to right. buy a military. See, here's a, yeah, he's waiting. I think he's just waiting. He knows where we're going, too. He does. All right, so. Get your route set up. We got uh, we got Lisbon. And we got Candy. Yeah, I just set it up with Lisbon's Lisbon way better yeah, money-wise. It's only four turns to get that going. I don't care about the faith, and it's way shorter. Yeah, yeah so get that route going. Just start routes with everywhere and everyone. It's so good. Look at how close that one is. That's ridiculous. That it's is good. really close. It's we so built good. really close to Lisbon. And that's good. That's really good because that's not an NPC. Again, Lisbon is not owned by a player character or even a non-player character. It's a dis It's a, what's it called? What are they called in this game? City states? City yeah, State. yeah, that's right. Okay. So you can get all kinds of benefits by becoming good friends with them. And it is in your benefit to do so. So we could. Uh, we got you really need to going. get that granary going because this city is developing very slowly. That's what I think we should do. You got a builder now, right? Well, uh, we can see our housing capacity is actually kind of maxed out. You have a builder going? Out. Yeah, which is why we need the granary. But, yep. Get those pastures going, irrigate that chocolate. All right, we got our builder out. So you can see uh, you could build a farm here, farm here. Irrigate that cocoa. I think we should go get some sugar. You don't get have a recommended building. Cocoa. Right? Yeah, get the if you got cocoa, you need sugar. Otherwise, oh, just we're just going to make Candyland over here. Yep. Love it. Man, Listen to that music. Man, Reeves, I just want to go home Ooh. and play some Civ now. Look at the silver <laughs> Killing down me. here. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else we didn't touch on exactly? Uh, I know it There's feels... probably a million things we haven't yeah. touched on. This game this is a lar rather large game. Doesn't sit, you know, it's not a great test chamber game. That's just not, exactly. how, it That's not how it works. I've, I'm worried that this maybe feels a little slow for people, but... It's actually a really good game. Like uh, I had a lot of fun. It's kind of definitely one of those like I just want to keep playing one more. Turn, right. One this more is turn. this game does not lend itself, and neither have any of the civilization games that we've done on Test Chamber. Like they don't, they just don't lend themselves to this kind of bite-sized look. We'd have to sit here and play for fifteen hours to give people a really good look. At Which the game. is possible. I mean, sure. these are such meditative games that I mean, I yeah, you you just wind up losing complete days or you, or you nights can if you're not careful. Just, yeah. But, and the presentation, I think, is just fantastic, sure, too. That goes a long way, me. well, to selling it, at least. I think it's... I mean, as, as Reeves said, if you like strategy games, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I say in my review, I think it's one of the best Forex games in a long time. I don't know really? how you feel. There's just Dante so many now that it's... There are so many, but I feel like... That I just hesitate cream to... Cream rises to the top, and this I, is... Yeah, yeah. Silky smooth. Silky smooth. Like I, I would say milk. my experience has not been silky smooth with the game, but it is an excellent game. Fair enough. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with like crashes and desyncs, especially in multiplayer. I hope they fix that. Um, it's a real pain. Everyone has to get back in the game, and then one player is it's it's, it's a little buggy. Uh, that's for multiplayer though. So single player, sure, maybe silky smooth. I got some UI issues, for sure. So we can see we can build a plantation here. Yeah, let's let's do let's that. Do it because it's more gold and housing. Proves our housing too, which is helpful. Which is great. Uh, so you can it. see that's already well not up yet. Next turn it will be up. up. Yet, yeah. Get that cocoa. And here uh -huh. we are. We can found our other city. Good. Let's do this. And then you can start a trade route with it. And get Bam. commercial districts going. Marseille. And then, man, we're on our way. Uh, can't buy a trader quite yet. Because you don't have a trade route capacity. Right. We're at our max, which you got to use build commercial districts and harbors to upgrade. Or, you know, and other different civics things can also do it. Like, I know when you're the merchant empire or whatever, you get two free trade routes with that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much good stuff. I just want to go candy. make 10 billion traders. Look at this guy. He's going to come in and try to take over my city. And then anybody that messes with your traders, you just kill them because you buy a million units. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's the might of money. I do like getting to gunpowder as fast as possible. Yeah, I just, completely like, skip it. I just don't care. Yeah. Basically, with my, with my strategy, I start building military units when, I'm a t when, when I need them. Until then, it's all tech. Sure. I and mean, you can just buy... All right. Yeah. And then when they attack me, I'll just buy the biggest unit I have, which will crush almost everything they have, uh, and throw money at it. Airplanes, all kinds of stuff. Like I'll have airplanes when they're still like with catapults. You're a money man. Yeah. Science and money. Yeah, science. Science is. I like science victory. I usually go for that my first playthrough. I like to go for the culture victory, the refined victory. The refined victory. Yeah. Creating great works, great writings, great music in my cool little wondrous 
Well, speaking of great writing, you can read my review <laughs> on GameInformer.com. I'm going to go read it right now. Go read it right now. Yeah, I need you to edit it, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a kind of quick look at Civ. Uh, early levels, we built two cities. And the game's just a beast. And like the nice thing about these games is you can kind of just keep playing them. Uh, a lot of like replay value in here. And yeah, I think a lot of fun. This is all we can really do for like, you know, a little look at things. It's just not a game that lends itself to it. So keep that in mind. Um, I think me and Reeves oh, are going to go get some hot dogs. Don't now. have it though. Yeah, I love hot dogs. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to go get a couple. It's a resource tile here, I think. For hot dogs. There, is. Dog it. there is. Yeah. You can set up like irrigation on the hot dogs and they grow, yeah, out of they the grow a little bit hot, larger and better. Oh, he's Everybody in the world is already marveling at our. I know. The fact we haven't that even we're done such a rich good. culture. We're probably not even winning. 140. One of those things where he's like, that's a nice silo full of money you have there. It'd be a shame if We're leading for religious this. victory. Wow, that's scary. Hmm. We're going to up the difficulty on this. That is weird. <laughs> so is there a um, particular... Did you find that one of the victories, the victory conditions, is like harder or easier? No, domination is usually the hardest. But the thing is, when you're going for domination... You can get the other victories if you're just crushing enemy cities. You're okay. going to take all the resources, right? right. So, so you're going to pretty much get it. So that lends it to even if you don't hit the domination, you'll win some of the other victories just by stealing all of their culture and science. Uh, and we, we're certainly not going to get to the spies in this, but spying is a big element of this game. Spy is a big element. You want to pretty much spy on everybody. Yeah, you can, can. You can spy and steal their technology. You can steal their uh, their great works. You can steal their money directly. It's crazy what you can do with spies, so be very careful. They can get game. caught. Which they is can. Unfortunate. But then you can like percent. do negotiations, yeah. like, hey, give me my spy back so I can spy on you again. Or just buy another one. Yeah. Just buy another one because you've stolen other money. So it's like, <laughs> definitely get spying going. You can counter spy too, but it seems counterintuitive because no one's spying on you. They do nothing. So mm. just get your spies out there. Grab that everything. I remember when I was going for a culture victory, I had one of my friends. They just kept stealing all the rare paintings I was putting in my museum. Um, and it didn't even matter because I just kept creating wonders. My tourism was off the charts. It was crazy. All right. Well, I want to come over to your city, Dan. I got to. I got to show it to you. It's yeah, beautiful. Show, show me your city. Open up to me. <laughs> well, this is uh, Civ. Uh, hope you liked the look at it. Uh, go play this game if you're a big fan of Forex games at all. You'll love it. Uh, if you like strategy games, uh, it's deep and and rich. Uh, if you've never played a Civ game, maybe this is a good jumping on point. Um, I don't know. It's a good game regardless. So if you like strategy games at all, definitely recommend it. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Yeah, we're going to go get some Dan, hot dogs. thanks for being here. Thank you. Ian, thanks for coming. Hey, thank you, you guys. You want a hot dog? Come with us. Sounds good. And as always, thanks for watching.